Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great time of the year, for the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this Christmas time where our families and our community come together. And we have such good fellowship. We thank you for the beautiful lights that are in our community that remind us of all the memories that we have throughout the years. Lord, we pray for our city council and our mayor our city manager and all of our leaders that you would bless them and give them wisdom for the difficult decisions they sometimes have to make. Lord, we ask you to bless the different cultures that we have in our community that we may come together as one. We're thankful, Lord, for each and every citizen that we have. We thank you, Father, for our city employees, for the good job that they do and the care that they have for our community and our people. Keep them safe and bless them this holiday season. We pray for our police and fire department, all of our emergency personnel, that you keep them safe over this dangerous time of year. Lord, we are so thankful for what little rain that we give, and we pray that you continue to bless us with more rain for our, our land. Father, we thank you for so many things in our community, especially for our businesses. And we pray for new businesses and revenue to come to our community. And Lord, we ask you to bless this meeting, <coughs> bless each and every one that is here. And we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Uh, alcohol order rendering in the hospital, solid waste, airport, and industrial authorities. And consider motion for approval of the consent agenda. Anybody? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Trustee Hughes? Yes. Trustee Dolly? Yes. Trustee Simi? Yes. Trustee Rudolph? Yes. Yes. We have an action item presentation in consideration of the 2013 14 audit. Mr. Scouts, you call no, James Thank you. I'm James Kirkendall, Rick Kirkendall, member of Weatherford. Uh, we've done your audits the last few years and we did it again this year. I uh, appreciate the board having us back this year. Uh, I want to uh, thank the staff, uh, Mark, Deborah, Lisa, and the rest of the staff uh, for their help as we were doing the audit. Uh, of course, the report itself was prepared by uh, Daisha and Russ, and I uh, want to thank them. Uh, in the process of doing the audit report, of course, we go through the records. We do testing to uh, be assured that the expenditures are vouched, that there's proper documentation on expenditures. We do testing of the receiving process to make sure that receipts are processed and posted as they should be. Uh, we also uh, do testing of internal controls to be sure that we can rely upon those controls for recording uh, not only the uh, income and expenses, but also the protection of the assets. Uh, and during that process, we also check to make sure that that you're in compliance with grants, uh, covenant restriction, and so forth, and with laws uh, regulating them. And during that process, we were satisfied that we did have sufficient internal controls and that the city was in compliance with uh, those uh, covenants and restrictions and then the state and federal laws regarding them. So we were uh, allowed to uh, rely on our internal controls. Uh, and so then we have our actual lot of opinion, which basically says that we feel like this is an accurate description, depiction of the financial condition of the city of Clinton, as well as all of its authorities, therefore related. Uh, and then the report itself, uh, you have a copy of it. Uh, Pages 14 is just a statement of the net position of the governmental activities. Uh, and those governmental activities are broken down on pages 17 and 18, which is basically the general operating account, capital improvement fund, four cent sales tax, <coughs> industrial authority tip accounts, and cemetery fund, and then the business activity accounts, which are the Industrial Authority, the uh, Public Works Authority, uh, the uh, Solid Waste Authority, and those activities are on pages 22 and 23. But on page uh, 14 is just a summary of you know, by governmental and by business type activity. Uh, as you can see there on page 14, our net position on the governmental activities is just over 26 million. That's an increase of a little over 2 million in our, in our uh, that position for the governmental activity. Uh, the business type activities, you can see there, 29 million, 478,000. That's a decrease of just over 3 million in the business type activity. Uh, one of the major uh, reasons for the decrease in the Net position on business activities is transferring the uh, cost of the fire station as an asset over to uh, the general operating account so that the asset is included in the governmental activities rather than the business activities. So that was a, a, a transfer of just over three million dollars. So that accounts for primarily the decrease in the fund balance in that position of the business activity accounts. Uh, and then going to the operating account, the general, what we call the general fund on page 18, 
You can see there the revenue and the expenditures. Uh, of course, our main revenues are coming from the various taxes, sales tax, use tax, franchise taxes, and uh, hotel, hotel tax. And overall, our actual, our, our taxes were down from the previous year. They kind of leveled out a little bit, so they're down a little bit. Uh, our charges for services are up just a little bit, so that we ended up with a, a decrease in our overall revenues for the general operating account of just under $300,000. Uh, and as you can see there, our total expenditures is 5719000 That's an increase of almost 300000 in our expenditures. Uh, so we had a net before any transfers of roughly 26000 in the general fund. Then our, operate, our, our operating transfers in and out. Uh, we actually transferred out just over 500,000, so we had a net decrease in the operating account of 470,000. Then, as you see at the bottom, the, there's a restatement of 675,000. You were notified that uh, there was an overpayment of some use taxes in a prior year, so that was posted to these to this financial statement so that we ended up with a net decrease in the general operating fund of $1,154,000. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the overall ended up being an increase of $2.2 million, primarily because on page 19, on the previous pages we had expensed all capital outlay as an expense deduction then for uh, presentation purposes for governmental purposes, those are turned around and capitalized. So on page 19, when we add back our capital outlay and then take depreciation on them, that's a net uh, adjustment of 4.4 million so that we go from an overall loss to an increase in our net uh, position of 2.9 million. That accounts for that increase. Uh, the uh, Public Works Authority, uh, as I mentioned, those are on pages uh, 22 and 23. Uh, overall, uh, we did have a loss, but if you look on page 23, uh, you can see that the net income before contributions and transfers shows a uh, $1,639,000 loss but included in our expenses of $1,690,000 in depreciation. So, before depreciation, we actually did have a net profit of $51,000 in the business activity accounts. Uh, and then we take into account the transfer to the uh, general uh, government account of the asset of the fire station and that accounts for our $3.2 million decrease in the fund balance for the activity accounts. Uh, on page 31, there's a note about the, the restatement, the 675000 that was uh, posted to, uh, to the accounts to get it in the current financial statement since it was uh, brought to our attention prior to submission of the audit report. Uh, on page 34, there's a note on our debt restrictions covenant, covenants and required uh, coverage. Uh, of course, we have to show that we're <coughs> generating sufficient profit to cover our debt. Uh, our requirement is 1.25 uh, overall coverage, and our overall coverage is 1.57, so we met our uh, requirements there. Uh, page 35 shows that uh, the collateral coverage for all the funds shows that the funds of the city are all covered uh, with collateral. Uh, page 36 shows the uh, breakdown on the capital assets, all the buildings, equipment, land, and so forth broken <coughs> by the various entities that, that uh, has it presented. Uh, 
page 38 and 39, there's a breakdown on our debt, our notes that we owe, our revenue bonds that we owe, and any capital leases that we have uh, outstanding. And those over, uh, decreased overall by $2.1 million from the previous year. And then the transfer between the various funds, those are noted on page 40. So overall, even though we did have a decrease in the uh, business activity accounts, uh, primarily because of the transfer, uh, we're still in good shape. We still show that we our revenues generated enough to pay our expenditures prior to capital outlay. Uh, we're meeting our debt covenants on, on all of our debts. Uh, we just need to watch since our, our taxes revenue is down since it's the significant portion of our operating revenues uh, and our expenses continue to increase. We just need to be sure we have a handle on expenditures. But overall, uh, we're still in excellent financial shape. Uh, the city uh, has continued to maintain uh, more than sufficient reserves uh, on the uh, balance sheet, there is a breakdown on the equity between what is invested in capital assets, what's reserved for any uh, restricted uh, account, and then the unrestricted account. And so those are still in good shape. Uh, like I said, we had an overall increase in the uh, governmental activity fund. So we feel like it is a Report for the city. Uh, you're doing everything like you should be. You've met all of your uh, covenants, the debt requirements. Uh, as far as uh, you know, the audit's concerned, we feel like this is an accurate and a good report for the city of Clinton for the year into June 30th of 2014. So we present it to you that way. <coughs> Second, anybody? 
I'll second that motion. Trustee Bredow? Yes. Trustee Huber? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Simeon? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Now who's going to replace Noah? Anybody have an idea of here? Somebody, first thing that I thought was uh, Mike Kerwall, but he doesn't live in the city limits. That's this. He's got to get to the city limits to qualify. He's not annexed. It's how it is. Maybe you are annexed. He wants to do it. Oh, does anybody else have another idea? Or I guess he can move there. He annexed his house. Just let somebody let him apply. Huh? Let people apply. We need somebody to apply. Okay, everybody, we should take a guess on the golf project. We appreciate it if we have a title to the newspaper. Trustee reports. City manager's report. No, sir. Audience participation. Consider a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting. Second. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Simeon? Yes. Trustee Huber? Yes. And Chair. Yes. On the board's authority agenda, a motion to consider a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Someone. Second. Trustee Dewan? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Rudolph? Yes. Trustee Simi? Yes. And Chair. Yes. Action on the bank. Uh, consider a motion to accept this portion of the audit for 413 Yes. Trustee Hewlett? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Simi? Yes. And Chairman? Yes.
just for caution, wanted to make sure that we didn't uh, tie our hands too much. But the net interest cost uh, is 3.689. We had kind of run in the low fours. I think 390 was the number. So we're we've done better than than we hoped as we progress through this transaction. So uh, we're very happy with the net interest cost to the city and the authority. Uh, the way we did this, uh, down, down towards the middle there, there's a maximum annual debt service and average annual debt service. The maximum annual debt service throughout the 30 year period is a million seven sixty nine, but the average is about a million six eighty six. I'll show you the debt service in detail in just a second. Uh, if you go to the next page, uh, bond pricing. This is where we made a change. You'll see about halfway down the page where it says 2039 term bond A and B. I got a call just before I was about to leave the office to come here and the, the underwriter called and said we can get all the bonds sold at, at the better rate. We had to split that uh, bond into two pieces A and B. He called me late and he said the guy would take all of them in the, in the most preferential mode. And so I did those. My numbers are going to show that the what you have that I passed out doesn't. The net effect is about thirty, forty thousand dollars difference in total debt service over the life of the bill. It's not a huge amount, but I thought it was worth waiting and being fifteen minutes late to be here. So we accepted that. So that twenty thirty nine term bond A and B, that's going to go away. We're going to kind of combine that into one term bond, uh, which I can update Mark and, and Deborah, whoever else wants to know about that after the meeting. Uh, if you skip a couple of pages and go to the page five, which is bond debt service, this is basically the, uh, the summing up of the whole bill. Uh, you'll notice in the first several years, the average annual debt service uh, is about a million twelve, and then it goes to a million seventy-eight thousand, and then eventually kind of ramps up to a million million seven sixty-five. We get our numbers have basically assumed about one point nine million dollars. So. It's a million seven sixty five versus a million nine. So we're we're pleased. We've come in basically <coughs> underneath all of the uh, benchmarks that we kind of established going forward. So I think I think we got a pretty good deal in the market. Uh, if you kind of towards the bottom there, you'll see some asterisks under the interest rates. That's that blending. So that's that's not a mistake. It's just the, the way the software is set up. It kind of combines those interest rates together. It doesn't show a value. So uh, if you go to page seven, I'm sorry, not page seven, this page, go to page eight, it says net debt service. Uh, this basically shows with the capitalized interest plan that we set up that between now and next December, you only, the debt service is only $539,000 because we, the June 1st payment will be made by the capitalized interest fund. So the city doesn't have to make a payment until December of the next year. Okay, so we set that up on purpose. Uh, overall, very pleased with the transaction. I thought the underwriter did a very good job. They called us back. Uh, they, they tried ideas out on us, and I was really quite pleased with their performance. Um, I thought they just did an excellent job, and they've been very cooperative throughout the process. Any questions? There's a lot of information, but I'm happy to answer Good job. Thank you, sir. And we're going to close these bonds on the 23rd. Yes, sir. What we'll do is uh, tonight, i got to make sure we have the bond purchase agreement signed and dated and timed and everything. So that's, that's the most important document in this whole thing is that bond purchase agreement. And then we'll get that signed this evening. Uh, there's a couple other documents that uh, the public finance law group sent to Lisa that I'll have to get signed. And basically, uh, the next step will be working on documents to paper everything up. And we'll close the transaction on the second point third. So it's a good deal that uh, we, we uh, opened our, our uh, minds and listened to these guys. They saved us a, a lot of money uh, in a very significant area. Well, the proposal that was on the table in front of us was 40 years of debt with the average annual repayment of $2.4 million, which is $96 million. Uh, this is 30 years at 1.7, which is about $51 million. So 10 years left, $45 million. The thing that was in the uh, first proposal that's not in this one is the canoe water line, which, you know, is $5 to $7 million. That's just a figure to hang out to. But, but, you know, there's no doubt that the city of Clinton benefited uh, 
from going going the extra mile, you know, taking you know, some done. extra time. Yeah, taking extra time and, and uh, you know, getting getting work not working to retire. Yeah, it was the mark. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, well, we weren't not working. We were just trying to get the best deal. <coughs> yeah, and then I, I think but this is good. Anytime you can decrease the debt that you have by this amount and still achieve your purpose. It's, uh, I also like to add, uh, just for your information, you know, we, whenever we put uh, a new piece of paper, this is considered a new piece of paper in the market. Clinton doesn't go to the bond market very often. Uh, there were very positive comments from the underwriter with regard to the re reception of the credit. Uh, and the, the ones that were interested had nothing to do with the credit. It was this late in the year. We're getting ready for Christmas, we want to close our books, that kind of stuff. So uh, generally you get kind of some negative credit comments whenever we take a deal of market, but there was none of that. They, uh, any, anybody who didn't bid on this bond, it was because they were done for the year. They just weren't interested in buying any bonds. So I thought, I thought we did very well. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Actually, I received a report from uh, Brian Meyer. Good, good evening, everybody. Appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, wish I could say that um, we had quite as dramatic uh, day as um, Ben did, but um, we did have a busy day as well, and I think a very productive day. Um, started out with a, a progress meeting update, uh, additional communication with DEQ uh, this morning in regard to their progress on uh, review of, of the engineering report for the Dixon property. Um, Basically, we were told that the, it would likely be done by the end of the week. Um, the, the real message, though, during the meeting that was significant was that this process is, is, is moving forward and quickly. And they essentially made the commitment that they're going to, to catch up and allow us to overlap some things that normally aren't done in the process. Um, for example, we're going to go ahead and submit the plans and specifications to file the application for construction of the, uh, the Dixon well, um, regardless of whether the engineering report has been uh, made through the full approval process. Uh, we also told them that um, one of the other significant issues is that we, had, we already had the, um, the bid requests on the street for the Dixon well. Uh, knowing that we will keep the process moving and we can't afford the, the downtime, uh, moving toward having the permit before we actually put in permanent construction. And they, 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 were, they were open to that, even to the point of uh, getting to where we actually start the test drilling that <coughs> precedes the actual well construction um, if they don't have the, um, the um, final construction permit issued at that time. So I would expect to see the, the engineering report by the end of the week um, approved, and then also the application filed um, for the, for the uh, construction permit also this week. So that was good. We also went a little bit further into some of the discussion just to get updates and talk about the process as we move forward. Um, I think they, they've got a good understanding on the schedule now. They know that we're continuing to work on the water treatment plant engineering report, which is going to be probably their biggest effort of the whole project. They have um, committed that we don't need to do engineering reports for the two pipelines. So that was, that was helpful. Because um, they are considered raw water pipelines. The other um, accommodation that they made was that on the golf course, we're going to go ahead and do a kind of a, a, a segmented engineering report that just talks about the design and construction plans for the, the wells themselves so that we can get a construction permit to get those drilled. Uh, the value of that in this whole process is just defining the, the once and for all what the quantity and what the quality <coughs> issues are. Um, and then we can plan the, the infrastructure around it. And it, it kind of helps them too, I think, in the review process, um, focuses on, on the parts they're interested in, and in this case, the well construction, and then we'll talk about the, the uh, components of the, of the well house or well height completion, electron, electrical controls, et cetera. So it was a productive meeting. I think um, the key is gonna be continued communication and coordination with them. You know, we talked about the very beginning of this program that there was a lot of moving parts. Well, that's you know I, I've come to that's never going to change in this. We're going to have 
a lot of fronts to this project that we're going to have to continue to work through. And that's probably not going to stop at any point with DEQ, even through construction. They're going to be one being engaged in the project. So we're just going to have to be vigilant on all fronts. So, but all in all, it's very productive. Very productive. A lot of work left to do. So, um, other, oh, go ahead, sir. We are opening the bids on the uh, web. Yeah, that was the, that was the, um, the really the second um, major component of today was we had a brief pre bid, non mandatory pre bid uh, meeting today for the, for the Dixon Wall construction package. Um, we anticipated that there might be a couple of folks show up. We had questions received from others that indicated that they had questions but weren't going to attend. Um, we actually had one contractor did have very good dialogue during the, during the, the discussion. Um, Going to take bids on Friday. Um, the good news was that all indications are people are anxious to start. So once we take bids with DEQ's approval, um, you know we can we can keep this process moving and make that progress while they're while they're going through their review process. So so that was um, that was positive. I'm looking forward to Friday. I think we're going to get um, get some cost effective proposals. So when are you going to take proposals on the Pipeline. Yeah, the, the, the balance of that project, we then the next meeting we had today was with local contractor and went through that. Um, I would anticipate that the project costs will be developed on that probably by, uh, largely by the, the first week in January, which will dovetail actually pretty darn nicely with having the well constructed and being ready to move in and do the, the balance of construction. Um, we're also in the same same mode with with uh, DEQ on that. That was part of the full engineering report was the balance of the project. So really, then we'll be submitting the the um, specification, the plans and specifications for for approval to them at the same time frame. So um, yeah, everything's coming together. Optimistic that the market conditions are good. Um, so I'm looking for for good pricing and uh, a lot of activity between now and and the end of January. So, um, I guess the other piece today was just an update uh, to DEQ. Uh, we do have a, a subcontractor, Envirotech, um, out of Enid, uh, under contract to do the preliminary study on the disposal well. Uh, this was a company that became recommended um, from a corporation commission uh, with good experience in the deep disposal well industry. Uh, so, their first order of business is to do the preliminary evaluate, basically determine the strata where the disposal would take place, what the likely capacity would be, what the pumping pressures would be. And then we'll take that information to DEQ and OCC and chart the path forward through this new process that we talked about in previous meetings. It's a streamlined process, but anytime you do a streamlined process for the very first time, you want to um, you want to make sure everybody's on the same page, so that'll that'll culminate probably in early early January with meeting with DEQ on the deep disposal well. So a lot of activity, and we expect even even more levels of activity, and probably more need to be back in front of you with, with frequent reports, and starting the first of the year. So we're going to be the first ones to go through the process of the deep disposal well. Yes, sir. That's the reason. Yeah, it's it's you know, and, and I think it's going to be a positive thing. Um, what they've really tried to do is align what's really takes place with municipal waste disposal, uh, in in the you know where it was classified as a hazardous waste disposal, it was class one permit to do that. Really didn't align with what the true risks were taking a municipally derived waste and disposing. You had more stringent construction and permitting standards than you did with with oil and gas uh, disposal. So there really was a realignment of, of what, the, what the permit requirements were. And I think it's being watched by other states as well, too, because I think it's something that was... was well, the advantage is that the Corporation Commission rules will be what's followed. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great point. You know, and in talking with uh, Mr. Baker with OCC, you know, he would say that their, their typical permitting for a deep disposal well was, you know, 45 to 60 days. Some of the previous class one, which was a was a large spectrum of wells, but you know, in case of taking years, if it, if it ever got permitted, so it's a real shift um, in in policy. And I think it's so we're hitting it at the right time, but we want to make sure we're 
for um, we're engaged in the new process. I think it's wrong to the corporation commission for the DEQ. Oh, so, so, Ron, we had the well drilled by the end of the year, and then the pipeline will be basically basically open the first week of January. So, when when do we expect this well to be <coughs> online and, and servicing? You, you know, I would look for the well to be online probably in February. You know, and we've got a couple things that have to come together to make that happen. Um, you know, the uh, probably the long lead items in this um, would be the um, the pump. Hopefully, we'll get a standard pump, one that's off the shelf, and then the electrical controls. Um, but assuming we hit on all those, I think that's that's a pretty real. The first step in the process with well, he will go out there and drill this test hole where the well is actually going to go. Um, and order is screen and gravel pack, which are is kind of long lead items or the well construction contractor long lead items. So I'd expect then that the actual well drilling would take place, you know, the first of January. Okay. So um, the other thing that that brings up a great point too. The other advantage of some of the conversation today is one thing we've been struggling to do is locate um, you know, and, and come up with an advantageous schedule for investigating other potential properties. Well, I think we, we found a contractor today that's motivated to do that. And so now we've got, a, we've got a potential path forward that's going to allow that investigation to take place in a timely manner and, 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 a, and, a, and a quality result. So I feel confident based on today's discussion. So that was, a, that was another positive outcome of today. So that, that contractor will drill our test well, and then remember we agreed to help Mr. Dixon find replacement water up to a certain financial amount. Same contractor will do that, and we're also dealing with uh, another property owner in the vicinity that we want to drill uh, test wells on him. We don't have uh, a city council agency group in contract with him. He's agreed to let us go in there and and put test holes down to see you know what's there. And more moving more will be. So, you know, things are falling together. There's a whole lot more moving parts that Brian alludes to that, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a spider web than it is, you know, pencil flight. But, it, you know, things are coming together, you know, the bonds being sold and money being available, and it, it's still not as fast as you want it to happen, but at least it's, you know, <coughs> taking shape. Did you send me already have DQ rules on this? No, we don't have a construction permit. That we can drill the test well without the construction permit, but we can't drill the actual production of it until they give us a construction permit. We will get Yes, we will. Good day. Thank you very much. Thanks for having Actually, I believe it's like we need to change trusting banks or more easy to bring first. Ben, Ben, would you would you discuss the uh, trusting bank issue, please? I need to make it one one correction to what I said earlier, though. I gave you the wrong part about the lines because I was looking at the bad information and not the good information. The, the actual par amount is twenty nine million four fifty, not twenty nine million one fifty. Basically, we sold more lines at a lower rate. That's why it makes sense. So, just think, why is he? You know, three hundred thousand up, we're better off. Is because your overall interest rate is lower. Okay. So that that correct. As far as the trustee, uh, basically, uh, because of the way your two thousand twelve bonds are structured, they control a. We have a uh, sample of something like that. Uh, the. Uh, what my thought. The two thousand twelve bonds and the new bonds are going to be under the same general bond indenture. Because of that, you want the same trustee bank. Because the, you, want the, you don't ever want to split the trustees on two different bond deals under one indenture. Because of that, and because of some uh, restrictions that the bond insurer has, uh, it makes sense that basically there are only two banks in the state that are big enough to serve as local corporate trustees for, for a tra bond transaction of this size. And that's bank first. Or be okay financial, and so Bank First actually offered you a better deal as far as the transaction costs. So that's 
Do you remember what those transaction fees were? I, uh, now I think I know it's like it was like three thousand versus six thousand, something like that up front. I mean, it's not a huge amount of difference. One of the other reasons we like Bank First is because they're a separate entity, completely separate from BOK Financial, who was your underwriter. BOSC was your underwriter. So we wouldn't have kept the separation. We thought that was kind of a tie breaker anyway. And I think representatives of OBT came to us oh, yeah. and told us that they realized that right. they, they didn't meet the requirements of one. Yeah, we our, our entire attention for that. Yeah, we always want we like to keep the local <coughs> bank involved if at all possible. This is just one of those deals where uh, it's just kind of a market requirement, and uh, uh, I have very good dealings with uh, OB and T. I thought they were very good at what they did. It's just one of those things where you guys are doing a, a big bond issue, and there are just certain national requirements that are required uh, that most banks in the state could not be. It just it's I like said it's be okay to make first. Okay. Just the reports? No, we, have, oh, we, we will need to uh, oh, take actions okay. to adopt the resolution with the Clinton Public Works Authority approving resignation. Uh, is, now, where's the resolution with this, Deborah? Is there a resolution here? Number, there's a resolution number. It's PW 14-09. Okay. I'd make a motion that we adopt the resolution PW 14-09. Trustee Burdock? Yes. Trustee Goodwin? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Which stayed? <laughs> yeah. Trustee Simi? Yes. And Chairman? Yes. Trustee Awards? Why? Yeah, like, I'm pleased that we're on the track. We're on the track before we told the people we would be on two months ago. Okay. We're getting the well drilled. Engineers are moving ahead, have the bomb so, and everything's going the way we said. The market saved us $40 million. I'm ready to do finances. Very good ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
start tinkering with their health insurance, it's already going to be able to go to our doctor in the NHS. Uh, the city saves money, the employees save money, the maximum uh, out of pocket is $5,000 versus $6,000. Not, not a perfect world enemy, but uh, it is it's a win-win for both sides, especially on the uh, pharmacy side. The wellness program, I never did compare those. I know they both have them. Yeah, they, they do. And uh, Julian, do you want to talk about that wellness um, program just a little bit? It's $150? So, uh, Julian is here with us from TNL. In case you guys have a question about TML, I decided to bring the uh, person who could speak specifically to uh, to that school. So. Mayor Council, appreciate the opportunity to be there. My name is Julian Fontana with uh, TML Multi State Intergovernmental Employee Benefit School. Um, the wellness incentive is included in our, uh, our program on an annual basis. It's for employees and dependents over age 18. It helps complete an annual physical and health risk assessment and a small list of biometric screenings. They'll receive a $150 incentive benefit uh, paid uh, by check. One step in, you know, creating some wellness and um, attention to their wellness and rewarding them for doing that. So, it's a good thing. Um, the, the last council meeting, you also asked um, how much the employee would actually save out of their pocket by moving to TML. So, I put this together um, for you, and it's right here at the bottom, underneath the TML column. And it actually shows you what the employee will say. Um, okay. um, by um, moving to TML, and one of the things you'll notice is that um, the family um, cost was pretty is, is pretty significant to the employee um, that will come out of their check. And um, a lot of cities struggle with family premiums. So I think that's um, a positive, um, a positive note. And then at the very bottom is um, actually the city of Clinton savings on the employee-only coverage that they provide, um, that they pay 100% of the training on. So um, you can transfer that is a uh, monthly saving, so you can multiply that by 12 and come up with what the annual savings would be. So what I'd like the council to do is act on resolution number 834, uh, authorizing us to enter into an inaugural agreement with the TML multi-state intergovernmental employee benefit pool. I'm sure that means health insurance. It does, it does. It just means you're being pulled with a lot of other municipalities. Everybody, the, the, the anniversary date for reduction was January 1st. January 1st, everything starts uh, over. Old plan, plan, new plan, everything resets. Comments or motion? Well, this is a pool instead of a traditional insurance company. It is a pool. Is there a, a, a reinsurance level that you have? That can... There is a reinsurance level. It will be invisible to you because it's built into the pool. Um, Julian, you might talk about what that is. <laughs> I, I can just sense the concern that uh, I've heard in your voice there momentarily. TML has been in business and in the health benefit plan business since 1979. We are not an insurance company. We are a risk pool uh, established under Chapter 172 of the local government code. Um, we are well reserved. We have over $50 million in reserves in the bank. We serve over 890 political subdivisions in the state of Texas. Um, and uh, so we, we are well reserved. We are not an insurance company. We are a risk pool. Uh, the specific stop loss level that we take for claims within our pool is uh, six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so the first six hundred thousand dollars the pool is on the risk for, and then we have uh, specific reinsurance above that amount. We do purchase aggregate insurance. Uh, there are about twenty-eight thousand employee lives and over fifty thousand subscribers in our in our pool. So it's a very large pool, uh, very well run and administered by. Are we going to be your first political subdivision in the state of Oklahoma? Actually, we are third. Okay. I 
have one other client that moved to TML in July, and they are extremely, extremely happy. They uh, saw them just last week, and they uh, they were pleasantly surprised at what they weren't. They really didn't know, you know, what to expect. But that uh, very very positive comment. Any other comments or motion? I'd make the motion we adopt resolution 834. Is that it? Yes. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. Councilman Sinead? Yes. Councilman Lowry? Yes. Councilman Hewlett? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy, don't run off yet. You're next, Steve. Uh, consider consulting agreement for employee health insurance with author J. Gallagher and the company. Back to the company that we have for us in the state of England. And we're going to that. So let me uh, kind of, you want me to just preface why we yeah. have a consulting agreement? Okay. Um, so um, in, your, in your plan that you have currently, um, you would pay someone like myself through commissions. Um, whenever you get an increase in your health insurance, as you probably would recognize, the commission level also goes up. Um, Mark prefers to play the game on a, um, I, would I want my rates to be my rates, and then I want you to perform the consulting services just like you would if you were hired under the other arrangement. So we built in a $21.50 per employee per month um, calculation, took commissions out, and put a consulting fee in place. And um, so you are a little less actually than what you were paying with commissions, but the good news is if your rates go up, you're still going to pay me the same amount that you're paying me today. So it helps me perform services. I kind of like to think I, I report to you on a report card basis, so we'll always do a year-end summary. We'll let you know what we've done, why we did it, how we helped you, and hopefully where we saved you money in the meantime. So um, keep you in compliance with the Affordable Care Act. That's my big value way, so that's what you'll see me doing a lot of, but um, Absolutely, we um, like to work on a consulting fee arrangement. We typically do this with clients of 100 or more employees, so you're right at that tipping point where we could do that. And, and we lean right, or the city leans on Christie for more than just shopping our health insurance. The Affordable Health Care Act has uh, created uh, numerous requirements that we didn't have before, and we do now. And to be in non compliance with those, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. A real big deal. So, yeah. you know, Christy's firm, uh, multiple individuals, I, she's who I talk to. But that that's one thing that I, I lean on her for. She's just not shopping my health insurance that's out there. Correct. It's, it's keeping me in compliance. Yeah, we, 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 truly, we truly try to be your partner, your strategic partner, and your consultant. Absolutely. Well, I believe we enter into a consulting agreement uh, with employee health. Gallagher and Company. Who's that? I'll second that motion. Councilman Rodolph? Yes. Councilman Newland? Yes. Councilman Lowry? Yes. Councilman Sidney? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. So consulting fee instead of commissions removes the incentive to find a higher, higher insurance premium. Right. When you, when you just, when, when it's built into the premium, you have no idea how much you are paying to solve. <clears throat> this this way. Most of the time, people don't know. Them. Yes, that's right. That's the way it is most of the time. Mm -hmm. But this way, there's a little bit more transparency. Yeah, you know, transparency. You know, Absolutely. That work. Yep. Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Action item C: Consider approval to accept purchase of five uh, drugs. Clyde. Uh, the Oklahoma Department of Commerce asked that when the CBG grant is completed that you, uh, the purchase of your uh, truck is completed, that you uh, vote to accept the project is complete. So they'll have it on the close out. So I would request uh, action from the council to uh, approve the purchase of the fire truck. Yeah, mostly. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, purchase of the fire truck is complete. Second, anybody? Second. Councilman Huber? Yes. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Smith? <coughs> Councilman Albert? Yes. And Mayor? Yes. Actually, I'm being present. Uh, we need a motion to approve this particular portion of the audit. I shall move. Second. Councilman Rudolph? Yes. Councilman Albert? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Albert? Yes. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Albert? 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 Yes.
Yes, that supports. Are we speaking of the bar truck being completed? Are we going to get the paint job on that thing? Get that up. Our, our name put on it, I guess, not paint job. Our, our We're working on the lettering as we speak right now, trying to get some different bids and trying to find somebody that can duplicate what's on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one bid and it was nineteen hundred dollars. We may change the way we approach it. That's all the good pricing letters. So we are working on that diligently. What name is on there right now? Adams. 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 Yeah, it's 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 got Adams. a weird name on it, so I thought we were gonna show it. I'll go with cheese buckets and carpenters, sides and carpenters. And uh, any other council parties against the reports? I saw that on there. Like, you mean trouble? Uh, no, sir. Water participation? Consider them up? Yeah. Oh, in the last election, there was a ballot concerning a charter amendment. City of Blackburn. It had to do with the following period of uh, moving to take office. And we put together, every, the last thing you do is get everything together and send it to the governor's office. Right. And they replied and said, Where's your proof of publishing? You have to publish this three times, explaining it to the public exactly what they're voting on. We didn't do that. So, uh, we are still under the old. I missed it. I, it's in the language of the, the Constitution right in the middle of a big 500 word paragraph. So, I missed it. We didn't get it published. The, the good news is um, easily traceable. We're not going to miss the uh, It was not going to go into effect until January 1st anyway. Um, so, it was not going to affect the installation of, of the newly elected uh, council. Uh, additionally, it's going to give us more time, I think, to look at the charter. Uh, we've always talked about making some potential revisions on outdated things and things that are in the charter. <coughs> we're not going to be under the gun. We're going to have additional time uh, to, to look at the charter and make some revisions that probably need to be made. Uh, it's not going to cost us anything. We're looking at doing a special election in, uh, looks like, April on the tax issue anyway. Uh, so we'll have another issue ballot. I just, that's what I was going to say. We can put it on there with that sales tax. Okay. That's exactly right. Uh, zero motion to adjourn. So I'll watch this straight up. Zero motion to adjourn. So we'll just see the stuff. Councilman Smith? Yes. Councilman Hewlett? Yes. Councilman Nardo? Yes. Councilman Nardo? Yes. Councilman Nardo? Yes. Yes.